<laughs> first one we have to get to is Chad Jackson, the Director of Athletic Communications for Georgia Southern. Chad, appreciate you joining us. Thank you. First time in, in this uh, nice little studio here. Hey, do you like the place? It looks pretty good, I, doesn't yeah. it? You like oh, our digs? Absolutely. All right. <laughs> it well, took one me of, a while to get down here, and that's it. It, but once I'm in here... Well, it took yeah, us a while to get nice. down here, too, yeah. about 140 <laughs> episodes. <laughs> it took us a while to find it, too. But we're bringing you in to talk about the Armstrong Hall of Champions, but I think you might be setting a record for Inside Eagle Nation because you've been on, I think this is your third time now? Fourth time, maybe? I, third or fourth. I know I was on uh, during the summer. Right. Uh, and then I was on once uh, when we were on the road. That's right. I think we were basketball. in New York. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, cause I think it's your fourth because we did your inside, Beyond the Bio. Right. And we did that from a suite at Stony Brook. <laughs> Very strange <laughs> setup up there. Then we had you on to talk about the history of the Armstrong Pirates. Right. I think we had you on one other time. And so I think this would be the fourth. This is a record. So, another yes. record. Look at you. So two records. You're helping us that. break all kinds of records today. <laughs> We're just rocking and rolling. But a special event for a lot of different people. You've got the Hall of Champions opening up down on the Armstrong campus. First and foremost, take us through what goes into that project and how, because I know it's been going on for a while. Right. Well, I, obviously, once the uh, the merger happened between the two schools, Armstrong State University and Georgia Southern University, we wanted to find a way that we could honor the Armstrong history of Armstrong athletics because the year of consolidation also happened to be the 50th year of pirate athletics. And we had a lot of things that happened throughout that year honoring that. And it's like, well, we don't want it to stop right there. Yeah. So Lisa Sweeney, uh, who was the athletic director at the time, was the deputy AD here for a few years, uh, still works on the Armstrong campus, uh, got together with some people in the community as well as some people on the Georgia Southern campus and said, what is the best way for us to do this, to keep the pirates in mind and keep their legacy honored without, but still within the framework of Georgia Southern. And so what we did was we decided there's plenty, I mean, the Armstrong uh, Sports Center, that's now the rack down on the Armstrong campus, um, was where most of the coaches' offices, head coaches' offices were. The athletic staff offices were there. It's obviously where you played men's and women's basketball. This is the building that's most identifiable as Armstrong Athletics. And so we wanted to find a spot within that building that we could, you know, and originally it was just to keep the Hall of Fame. But then we were like, look, there's a lot more to Armstrong Athletics than just you know, the Hall of Fame. It's extensive, but there are many teams to be honored. There's many, there's much memorabilia. There's so many trophies uh, that were in the front of campus. Peach Belt Conference trophies, NCAA championship trophies, region trophies. You know, what is the best way for us to spotlight it all? And so through about a year process, uh, we came up with a design firm that designed the space and then the construction uh, followed from that. It's still under construction. It was originally supposed to be completed. The space was supposed to be completed in December. But again, with COVID, with supply chain issues, yeah. things have been pushed back. Um, but we are proud to finally say we're going to have it completed. Originally, we wanted to do the ribbon cutting this month, but it's been pushed to next month. But yeah, on the 11th of February, we'll be able to introduce everyone to the new hall of champions and it's going to be a fantastic space it's going to be interactive you're going to have a lot of trophies on display you're going to be able to see the complete list of all americans that played at armstrong you are going to see the hall of fame both in a wall display as well as an interactive display a touchscreen display and it should just be a really really fun day but a really appropriate space to encapsulate the history of pirate athletics We'll get into what that day looks like in just a few minutes, but it's something that you've been talking about and as many road trips as we go on. <laughs> I've gotten to hear about it over the last year or so. But the interactive touchscreen display that you've been talking about is something really cool that I don't know that a whole lot of people have heard about from the sense of there's so much information that you're able to put into it. And for somebody that knows as much about Armstrong Athletics as you do, being able to put all that information in on the back end so people can easily go and find anything they want to. Right. Basically, from 1967, which is the first year that the Pirates you know, were a four-year institution, Armstrong State University, Armstrong State College back then, 
until 2017, there's going to be a listing of every athletic team sponsored and the complete rosters. Now, one of the th- things that I've been doing, and, and we are firmly, uh, this is going to be a ongoing thing. Everything that is in for that uh, grand opening or the ribbon cutting, that's not going to be all of the material that's going to be in that interactive touchscreen. It's going to be constantly updated because, again, I only got to Armstrong in 1999. You're talking about 30 years before that of history. We're going to be continuing to collect photographs, collect information that we can add to that interactive display. Right now, the way the interactive display, and there's going to be two of them, there's basically going to be three sections that are going to have the listing of the All-Americans, and then in between are your two touchscreen displays. You're going to have an interactive timeline of Armstrong Athletics. You're going to have a digital listing of the Hall of Fame members that goes into more detail about what they did at Armstrong. And then you're going to have that listing of every athletic team, every name, every headshot, if we have it. And again, I'm going to be going back into you know the Inkwell archives and Spain Morning News archives to try and add as much photographs as we can find. And it's going to be one of those things where it's going to be constantly updated. We obviously have all that stuff for the last 15, 20 years as things moved more digitally. But if you talk talk about going back to 1960s, 1970s, you know, that's a lot of PDFs and a lot of scanning of photos. <laughs> and and one, I'll give you an example. Uh, we have a, a woman named Patty Kaplan. She was an individual qualifier for the national championships in cross country in 1997. That was two years before I got there. I had nothing in my archives of her at all. No pictures, no nothing. I was able to reach out to her and say, look, we are creating this display. Do you have pictures that you can send me? And sure enough, you know, that weekend she did send me pictures. That's going to be included in the display. And that's something that going into the grand opening we want to get out there is, look, we want as much as possible from people who either played at Armstrong or know someone who played at Armstrong to give us that information so we can make it the most comprehensive display we can. With your experience, what has it been like marrying the history of Armstrong Athletics as part of now Georgia Southern Athletics? It's been different because, you know, there's there's obviously a stopping point. So it's not like you're updating anything. Everything that happened in 2007 is done. But the research never stops because you know I still get probably once every month or two I still get requests from people whether it's researchers whether it's other schools we still have some student athletes trying to play so I have to keep that stuff as updated as possible but then one of the things that's going to happen here in the next uh, year or so is that the Armstrong Pirates website is going to go away because you know it's been 4 years yeah. so one of the things we're currently exploring is how we can separate of the Hall of Champions is get that information underneath gseagles.com and underneath georgiasouthern.edu. One of the things that has been really great is both Henderson Library here on campus at Georgia Southern Lane Library on campus at Armstrong added a lot of information to the digital commons. So if you go on to georgiasouthern.edu, you can research and see a lot of stuff that's already been archived through that. Now, how do we put that into gseagles.com, or do we even need to? That's a discussion that's going to happen probably here within the next few months. Again, the Armstrong Hall of Champions is going to have the grand opening Friday, February 11th at 2.30 on the Armstrong campus. Give us an idea of what that day looks like coming up here in uh, a little over a month. I mean, it's basically just a, a time to show off you know, all the construction and all, and all the way uh, – we wanted to present Pirate Athletics. You're going to have multiple trophy cases. It's going to have all the national championship trophies. It's going to have all the region championship trophies. But also one of the cool parts, it's going to be a, a double-sided trophy case. We're calling it the Memorable Moments trophy case. And it's going to be like a museum exhibit. It takes you from 1967 when, when the Pirates started throughout the first uh, athletic teams that had success, men's basketball in the 70s, which used to play down at the Savannah Civic Center used to routinely draw four or five thousand pack that gym um going through the beginning of women's athletics under bj ford going through the the highly successful baseball program under joe roberts and so around that it's a case that will have trophies but also we hope to have some more memorabilia to add to that and it's basically just telling the story 
as much as we can. We're also going to have uh, a lot of the banners that actually hung in Alumni Arena. They're going to be on the wall that's going to be framed by the original floor of the basketball gym from the old uh, ARC, the Aquatics and Recreation Center, which was built in 1965 on campus. Oh, that's that's cool. going to frame the banners. And the one thing we we're talking about is there's so many banners. We're not just going to put banners up and say that's it. Every so often, we're going to rotate out banners. We're going to make sure all sports that have uh, representation over the years. And so I think what we want to do to show this off, but we also want to tell people, you know, this is going to be an ongoing thing. We want to get them involved. We want to say, you know, if you have an idea of, hey, you want to see this softball or this baseball, let us know. And we're going to keep changing things out as long as we can. I know the Armstrong family has been a really tight knit group even since the consolidation. We go on road trips all the time, and you're like, "Hey, this person <laughs> is here now. I'm gonna go find them." We do it at Little Rock. I think we found somebody at Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. But what's the response been from the Armstrong family? I know you and Lisa Sweeney have kind of spearheaded this project. What's the response been from different people? Oh, it's been fantastic. It's it's been you know every person or every group that we've talked to whether it be online or over the phone has basically said you know this is something that we're glad is going to happen but they've also like i said before they've wanted to be involved in it you know they're always like let us know when this is going to happen we had a baseball reunion in the fall down at savannah quarters and i was able to go to that and kind of talk to people we didn't have a lot of the details quite at that stage but you know we were like look this is going to be happening and to a man every one of those uh, former baseball players and coaches were like let us know and so when the release went out and the date was announced you know we've gotten so many social media mentions so many emails and texts from people you know telling us already they're going to be there for that february 11th date and we're just hoping that the social media outreach continues you know you get all of those former baseball players we have plenty of former soccer players who are in the area plenty of former basketball players who are in the area and we really just want to get that word out because it's a it's not a very big space it's a small space we would love to have that packed with former pirates coming back to see the hall of champions with so many projects that are about to take place yep at Georgia Southern, the IPF, the Convocation Center, even in Statesboro, the revitalization of the Blue Mile in downtown, there's plenty that's going to be going on. But that's still quite a few months away, even from getting shovels in the ground and certainly a long way away from the finished product. But this is something, if people want to get involved that are passionate about Eagle Nation, it's coming up in five weeks. Absolutely. And again, you know, one of the big reasons for the consolidation, but one of also the big you know, things for Georgia Southern as an administration and as an athletic administration is they want that Savannah presence. We've got, you know, now this Hall of Champions. We've got the new End Market Arena that's going to open up later this month. Right. We've got, we've already had the baseball team playing at Grayson Stadium. We've had, we've hosted Georgia Southern events on campus with volleyball. This is another reason to say, look, we can have an impact on the Savannah community here in Statesboro. By the way, we just got confirmation. Our buddy Moose saying this is your fourth time. Oh, look at that. Someone's keeping tabs. <laughs> this is a project. I don't know why that made me laugh. But <laughs> <laughs> this is a project that you have put a lot of hard work into. Lisa Sweeney has put a, hard lo- her, a lot of hard work into. There's been so many people that have had a hand in this project, but for you for lisa for the people that have kind of spearheaded it and seen it from the beginning until now what does a project like this mean to know you're almost a month away from the grand unveiling i mean i think it's one of those things where you know i've been over there a couple of times to take pictures to post on social media of the in progress but i think it's one of those things where i won't i won't be truly seeing the impact of this until i see other people see it because you know i work on a day-to-day basis it's been part of you know part of my job really for the last three or four years since i've come over from armstrong but to see some former student athletes to see some former coaches come and what that's going to be the the moment that i'm looking forward to the most 
Chad, really appreciate the time. Appreciate what you've done for this project especially, and I know it's really special for a lot of different people. Thank you. I appreciate uh, the time coming on, and uh, hopefully hopefully we'll get a fifth time on the podcast here sometime soon. <laughs> well, don't you worry. <laughs> one, one for the thumb. One for the thumb. <laughs> don't you worry. Hey, before we let you go, got to get your thoughts on the hot start for Georgia Southern women's basketball. For those sure. who don't know, Chad, the sports information director and the contact for women's basketball, for softball, for women's soccer as well. But 10-3 and three start for Georgia Southern women's basketball. You get the pain of having me in your ear for most of these games as my broadcast partner but thankfully you bring it to some kind of normalcy but what's this uh what's this team look like to you i mean it's one of those things where we talk about a lot in athletics about year three whether it be from a student athlete or a player standpoint or a coaching standpoint year three is where you see you should see the most most growth and the most impact and you're seeing year three under coach howard in full effect you have a team that is deeper than the other previous two years you have a team that can run out players that are they want to run her system and they can wear opponents down but also play at such a high level that you're not just throwing bodies out there to throw bodies these are very talented players offensively and defensively everyone knows their role everyone can step up as we just had this past thursday with people out against arkansas state you had you know someone like lydia freeman playing this playing a career high 20 minutes because of the shortage of the post players played really well you had maya burns once again coming through she has made so so many uh, steps forward in her third season with the Eagles. You know, the ten and three is the best start in nearly thirty years. Wow! But there's still room for improvement. I mean, I know there's people out there, and I know the coaches think you know it's ten and three, but they truly believe in their mind they should be thirteen and zero at this point. They had leads in all three of those losses in the second half, and so you know. You're now going to get into the rigors of Sunbelt Commerce. This is the last hurdle. It's how you are going to take this momentum and go into a conference play where week in, week out, you're playing two tough games, whether it be at home or on the road. You know, where are you going to see this team take that next step? You know, I don't want to put a goal on there. I know our coaches are probably thinking, you know, they want a championship, they want 20 wins. Sir. I just want to see this team day in day out in the Sunbelt Conference start to get feared like some of the teams like Troy like Little Rock and I think that's starting to happen Chad appreciate the time you and I are going to be hitting the road to Conway South Carolina on Wednesday to take on Coastal Carolina well, hopefully <laughs> to take on Coastal Carolina on Thursday and then make our way up the mountain on Saturday looking forward to another road trip appreciate you stopping by absolutely thanks for having me thanks man once again, that's Chad Jackson, the Director of Athletic Communications for Georgia Southern Athletics, one of the great people around this department, as we're going to catch up <laughs> catch up with a lot of people. He made his day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. He has become a knack, by the way. He has this thing, and for whatever reason this year, he has made it a point to try to mess me up as many times as he can. He got the good one at Auburn. But it's about once a game where he will throw me off course. Well, it's one of those you hear it and you think, wait a minute. That's not quite right, or that's really funny, or he just did that to mess me up, something like that. But as we look at Georgia Southern women's basketball, got the victory last week in the lone game for Georgia Southern, 84-75. And it was a week that was... It was pretty strange. A 